a massive Spectrum deal, FCC approvals, and updates from the competition. Here's your AST Space Mobile News Update for August 2025. On the 11th of August, AST Space Mobile shared its earnings results and there were a lot of new and exciting updates. Before we get into them, a big thank you to AST's investor relations team for revamping the presentation slides, a request we made earlier in the year. This new pack feels cleaner and clearer while featuring some excellent AST Space Mobile graphics. Perhaps the biggest news was that the company now has a proforma cash position of over $1.5 billion. This was in part thanks to it fully utilising the ATM facility it had established just a few months ago in May. AST clearly made use of the soaring stock price to bolster its funding position. On the business update call, CFO Andrew Johnson said that the company is now fully funded to reach the 45 to 60 satellite level, a massive achievement for the company. In addition to this announcement, AST shared that eight Bluebirds were now assembled with it expecting to hit its target production rate of six phased arrays completed per month by the end of 2025. Later in the month, the company posted an update on X sharing that Bluebird 6, also known as FM1, was now fully assembled and in final testing. It shared that it was also targeting to complete the phased arrays for all of the next 10 Bluebirds in August as well. Later in the month, the FCC provided approval for launch of and beta testing with the first 20 Block 2 Bluebirds. With the 5 Block 1 Bluebirds in orbit, this will enable AST to reach the 25 needed to provide non-continuous coverage to key markets and to start generating revenue. The approval is currently limited to telemetry, tracking and feeder links, with director device services deferred for now, presumably these will be approved once the tech has been proven in orbit. When will these Bluebirds launch? Well, in the earnings announcement, AST reiterated that it plans to have at least five launches before the end of Q1 2026. This led to maybe the most exciting piece of news from earnings. The AST plans to commence offering intermittent services in the US during 2025, with the UK, Japan and Canada following shortly after in early 2026. We live tweeted updates from AST's earnings call, which you can find over on our X account, and we improved the call's audio quality and shared this along with the slides on our YouTube channel. An essential watch for any AST Space Mobile investor. During August, AST also announced that it had reached an agreement to acquire priority rights to global S-band spectrum. To communicate with any device wirelessly, you need access to the right radio spectrum frequencies. Different spectrums have different uses, with some being ideal for fast 5G services, while others are better for providing widespread penetrative coverage at lower speeds. This is why AST has been aggressively acquiring spectrum this year, with this new S-band spectrum complemented by the L-band AST gained access to earlier in the year from Legado. AST Space Mobile's partner AT&T was also busy buying Spectrum in August, spending $23 billion to acquire some of Echostar's mid-band and low-band Spectrum in the United States. SpaceX also acquired some Spectrum from Echostar for its Starlink direct-to-device satellite service, but we'll share more details on that in our September update. Another piece of news from August was that Andrew Johnson, AST Space Mobile's Chief Financial Officer and Chief Legal Officer, sold 20,000 shares of his ASTS stock holding. This transaction follows previous selling from AST's President Scott Wisniewski, and will see Andrew Johnson net a little over $1 million. The sale represented around 5% of AST's CFO's holdings, so while it wasn't a significant number, it was still sizeable. We're sure many space mobile investors would be quite happy to be holding 20,000 shares in the company. In terms of the rest of the market, competition is hotting up with SpaceX successfully deploying simulated satellites using Starship in August. Because of the size of Starlink's Gen 3 director device satellites, SpaceX needs Starship to deploy these, so this successful test launch puts the company one step closer to competing with AST's planned data services. 
SpaceX's partner T-Mobile shared a new advert in August introducing their Supermobile service for business. The network's launch announcement said that the Supermobile offering comes with seamless satellite coverage, with the advert showcasing areas you can stay connected. Given T-Mobile's Starlink service is currently SMS only, it appears that the idea you can remain connected anywhere is more aspirational rather than the reality of the network's current offering. The final piece of news this month was that SATCO ASC joint venture with Vodafone in Europe was successfully formed in Luxembourg during the month of August. SATCO will provide an easy way for new mobile network partners to onboard with AST Space Mobile once services are launched. We've got a few things to look forward to that are coming up in September. Firstly, there's the Bank of America fireside chat with AST's president, Scott Wisniewski. Then there's Blue Origin's New Glen launch, which is scheduled for the 29th of the month. It also seems highly likely that we'll get an update from AST on both the ISRO launch of FM1 and the next planned launch with SpaceX2. Now let's review analyst price targets for AST Space Mobile stock. As we covered in our video last month, on the 1st of August, B. Riley Securities increased their ASTS price target to $60 per share. On the 7th of August, Scotiabank lowered its price target to $42.90, down $2.50 from its previous $45.40 figure. Following AST's earnings announcement, many other analysts adjusted their price targets too. On the 12th of August, Deutsche Bank revised their price target down by $5, adjusting it from $64 to $59. Meanwhile, on the same day, Roth Capital Partners also revised their price target by $5, this time upwards, moving it from $51 per share to $56. Two days later, UBS reinitiated coverage of AST Space Mobile. The Swiss investment bank had paused its coverage of ASTS while it was representing the company in several transactions earlier in the year. In August, UBS restarted coverage by moving its price target from $38 to $62 per share. It then lowered this to $43 in early September while also replacing its buy rating with a neutral rating citing increased competition as the reason for this, something we'll dive into more in next month's video. Zacks, Clearstreet, Cantor and Bank of America didn't issue any price changes to their targets in August. The average price target now sits at $51.88, which is slightly higher than the $44.94 where AST Space Mobile stock closed in August. As ever, you can stay up to date with everything AST by supporting and subscribing to Connected Space.